Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weekly Static. This guy right here with all the hair who needs a haircut. I'm Ray Fluke, television beat writer for Bleeding Cool. And this little ego stroke that I have going on here with my partners, Batmer, Trejo, and, of course, Rocky, who, again, is just roaming around aimlessly. We call this the Weekly Static. It gives us a chance to look back on some important issues from the past week, give hopefully a funny, interesting, unique, sometimes may even piss you off perspective on some of those issues. Now, this past week, we've had a lot of stuff going on in the land of pilots. For those of you who don't know, this is around the time when the network started announcing what pilots they're picking up for the 2018-2019 season, and there's been a ton of them. Um, so please make sure you check out BleedingCool.com to check those out. Also, as is usual, CW and DC and their constant stream of updates and preview photos and trailers and clips and everything like that, they've got their stuff together, so please make sure you check out Bleeding Cool also for those, because Dan's been doing a great job in keeping up on those, and they put out stuff like if Stephen Amell changes his jock, they're putting out like 14 pictures, three teaser videos, an interview, and everything else to go with it. So it's not easy to keep up on, so please make sure you check out his work too. But as we said at the top, what we do here, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with my hands, um, in honor of my spirit animal John Cusack and the great movie High Fidelity, we are going with the top five. So we're going to be looking at the top five things that kind of peaked this brain this week. And we're going to start number one, Shameless is William H. Macy. Um, gave a statement to the press uh, regarding a meeting that was had amongst men of Hollywood to discuss the situation that is happening with men. And in his comments, he initially seemed to give kind of an, an inference that it's a tough time to be a guy and it's really tough to be a guy and almost a, it's a little unfair. Extrapolating it out a little bit, you, you see the context of the meeting. The meeting was actually put together and formed by his wife, Felicity Huffman, who ha has been leading the charge big, big, big time on gender equality and trying to expose sexual harassment in Hollywood. Uh, William, so I know where William H. Macy was coming from, but if you read the article, this is the only thing I ask. Read his quote about gender equality. That's the only thing that I call into question and why it made the top five is because he seems to kind of equate gender equality with somehow stifling artistic voices or muddying the entertainment and artistic field. So I'm kind of not sure where he's going with that. I don't want William H. Macy, who I love, I think is a fantastic actor, uh, just Boogie Nights just alone, amazing in that. I, I just don't want William H. Macy to get a pass because of who he's married to. Um, just because you're married to somebody or dating somebody doesn't mean you necessarily reflect their politics. Sometimes you reflect their politics for the sake of a PR standpoint. So that's our number one. Number two, ABC has given a pilot light to get Christy Love. Uh, the reason why I'm including this in all of the pilot season's uh, issues that are going on is because there's something very cool about Get Christy Love. Get Christy Love, 1974, uh, Teresa Graves, first African-American actress to be the lead in a one-hour drama series ever. And now to see Get Christy Love being greenlit to pilot, it's coming from power creator uh, Courtney Kemp, who was one of the very first female black showrunners to, ha to, to, to hold the position on a premium cable show. This is also at a time where it's being greenlit to a pilot by ABC's very first African-American president and from a production company, UniTV, who also has their very first female black, female African-American president. So it, it, again, it just it blows my mind that we're seeing these things. It's not a sign of, hey, this is happening, so everything's great, but these are steps in the great direction, so I love seeing that. So that was our number two. Number three. Oprah Winfrey. For those of you who may not have heard, Oprah Winfrey gave this amazingly great speech at the Golden Globe Awards, um, and it got everybody speculating about, oh, well, <clears throat> is this her political speech testing the waters? Is she going to run in 2020? Now, in the article, you'll see it. Now, this happened before the Golden Globes, but she gave an interview to InStyle Magazine where she talked about how she really wasn't into it. She's talking about how, in her quotes, she didn't have the DNA for it because of what it takes. Now, does that mean things may have changed after the awards? If you listen to what her friend Gail King had to say after the awards, it seems to reflect what uh, Oprah Winfrey was saying even before the awards ceremony about it. So I don't think we're going to be seeing that. Also, I think in general, maybe we start stop looking for reality show hosts, talk show hosts, or celebrities, or everything like that, as great as they are. And to be honest with you, I think Oprah would be a fantastic president. Uh, but how about we start looking to people who just have the political experience that are necessary, who can do the job necessary, and not just because they have kitchen table name brand recognition. Go back to the old school ways. Um, I, I understand where we are now. The idea is let's just do anything to kind of fix this and, and right the ship. But my always concern is that we just end up leveling more problems on than we actually fix. So that was number three. 
Number four. Ah, uh, my friend Vince McMahon, your company, the WWE, and I have had such a lovely relationship going back to my little boy, little old man geek, so that would be uh, young boy geek years. I'm trying to get that right. Um, so you are bringing back the XFL. Fantastic. Sure. A couple problems with that. First, I'm going to be honest with you, and I, I'm stealing a joke that I had used earlier, but I'm going to go with it anyway. I can't help but think the decision was made in the middle of some serious post-midlife crisis where he sees what his son-in-law is doing with the WWE and what Stephanie McMahon's doing with the WWE and Shane being back and everything. And I think this is just his way of basically saying, well, screw you guys. The old man here still got his crap together, and he can still put something together like the XFL, and I know what went wrong, and I can fix it better this time. And I also imagine him saying this in a room where there's like images of the old XFL being shown on a screen while he's in his tidy whiteies with an old XFL like he hate me jersey and a helmet on. And it's a very, very sad, sad scene um, because I don't know what the point of the XFL is. I, if you're going to go for more concussions, I mean, yeah, you're going to get your bloodthirsty crowd. You're not going to pull enough of an audience. It doesn't matter if you're doing it during the off time of the NFL or not. So if, if you're going to say, oh, we're going to give all the safety possibilities we can, Okay, then you're basically the NFL, essentially. If this is about taking a knee and the national anthem and everything else, you do not build a league off of that. You tried to build a league off of badass attitude, and it didn't last more than a season. You're attempting this from an even smaller perspective. Now, again, do I think it'd be interesting? Absolutely. But I think at the end of the day, is it really going to look any better than replacement players for the NFL? Hell, it's going to be worse because at least replacement players were playing in uniforms that people recognized. So good on you, busy man. I wish I had $100 million to blow, but I don't. So yeah, good on you. Uh, but hey, just again, keep the two worlds separate because there's just no way I can't see it down the road that some investor in the XFL isn't going to say, hey, why aren't we promoting the XFL in the WWE? So, you know, and once that goes down the, that road, everybody starts making the whole, oh, the quarterback's going to get a still cold stunner on the 50-yard line and stuff like that. So, yeah, but good on you. Again, $100 million, I guess, yeah, I guess maybe I'd do it too. Yeah. Um, so that's number four. Our fifth, big number five. Uh, and this happened today. Jamel Hill, who I am a huge, huge fan of. I think she just does a great job when she's hosting any program in ESPN. I love her writing. I love her reporting. I loved the idea that her and Michael Smith took over Sports Center at 6 o'clock. It just was funky. It was fresh. It was new. Yes, I said funky, fresh, new. Yeah, I I'm going a little old school, putting a cool spin on it. Um... But I, I just love the unique take on it, the interesting perspective. And what I loved is that a lot of the, the other people from ESPN who would come on just seemed such more relaxed and so much more calm when they'd be on there. So, A, I'm going to miss that because that's going to be happening in February. Um, but I know she's going to be moving on to ESPN's microsite, The Undefeated, uh, which I know it concentrates on race, gender issues, pop culture issues, all swirling in and around the world of sports, which I think she would be fantastic for. I hope she also doesn't give up on her social issue advocacy. And I hope she doesn't give up on Twitter, even though ESPN doesn't seem to really like her on that. Um, but yeah, Jabel Hill, she's going to be a huge, huge loss. Um, my hope is we still see her as frequent guest. If nothing else, again, around the horn, you gotta got to have her on. I personally would love to see her as one of the new co-hosts of Part of the Interruption. In fact, Part of the Interruption with Jamel Hill and Michael Smith would be awesome. I think they'd be fantastic. But um, bestie Jamel Hill, I'm going to miss you at Sports Center. Um, but yeah, best of luck to you. Um, okay, that's our five. This is the Weekly Static. Let me know what you think. Uh, you can comment down below. You can hit me up on my social media. Tell me what I missed. Is there anything I should have gone over? Is there anything I missed completely? Are you hearing me and going, you have no idea what the hell you were talking about? Well, again, just let me know. Be a little nice. Show a little respect. Because at the end of the day, all this stuff is pretty much about opinion. But, again, let me know what you think. My name is Ray Fluke, a television beat writer for Bleeding Cool. I'm glad you joined me on our little journey down the rabbit hole that we call the Weekly Static. And I will see you guys next week. But don't forget, check out BleedingCool.com during the week. To check out the writing that I do for television, that a lot of other great writers do across the board for television, movies, comic books, video games, collectibles, everything. So have a good weekend, folks.